Essentially speaking, Alabama football is straight up falling apart and it's a complete disaster. With Nick Saban in Alabama suffering a heartbreaking loss to Tennessee, it's only gotten worse since then. You're now having your star players come out and say that they had anxiety before the game and they was nervous. To back that statement up, Nick Saban even stated himself that Alabama didn't have that normal swagger before the game because they weren't chanting. They just walked out there like they were scared. I mean, coming out of the locker room, our players always chant. They weren't chanting. I said, why aren't you guys chanting? What's up with that? And oh yeah, how can we forget to mention the viral clip that's going around where Alabama star wide receiver Jermaine Burton hit somebody after the game. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can't forget to mention and throw this in there. Saban has also stated they're playing too soft. I want y'all to really analyze and think about that. An Alabama Nick Saban led team being soft? That's something you don't hear every day, especially coming from the head coach himself. For the past 15 years, ever since Saban has been there, Alabama was known for being this hard and rugged team that nobody wanted to play. However, fast forward in time to 2022, it seems like they lost that quote unquote Bama factor, the fear factor, and nobody's scared of them. To be honest, as a Bama fan, it hurts me to say this. I can't blame them. Why would you be scared of Bama? They are soft right now. If you thought everything I just said was a lot, and it is, to go on top of that, you're also having Bama fans wanting the offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien to be fired, and also the defensive coordinator Pete Golden to be fired. Essentially speaking, Alabama football is straight up falling apart and it's a complete disaster. Or is it? Is Alabama really falling off? Is the dynasty really starting to come to an end? We hear and see this conversation every single year and it never holds true. But this year, it may be a different story. We've got a lot to talk about. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And there's a bunch of you watching in general that are simply not subscribed. Actually, hold on. On one of the previous videos, I said, let's see how many new subscribers we can gain from this video. And I'll tell you in the next one. And we gained over 500. 500 subscribers from one video. And hey, why not? Let's do it again on this one. However many subscribers we gain from this video, I'll tell you in the next one. Or maybe not the next one, but one in about two or three days. I can't emphasize it enough. Subscribing is free. It doesn't hurt you. And it helps the channel out tremendously. You don't even understand it. All right, Matt. Blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. That was kind of weak. Let's get into it. That's better. I wanted it to be kind of suspenseful, but it, it didn't feel right. You got to be energetic. Let's get into it. All right, let's go, let's go. I want to address this first because it's been on my mind all year long. And some of y'all, y'all can act like you understand it, but I don't think you really do. I can't stop thinking about it. If you guys are on Twitter like me, by the way, go follow me on Twitter. I'll follow a bunch of you back. All you see during the games is all these Bama fans crying and complaining about how they want Bob, who is Bill O'Brien, fired. Fire Bill O'Brien, he makes the worst play calls, fire Bob, fire Bob, blah, 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 blah. It's always really blew my mind, and this is when I say I hate Alabama fans, it's what I'm referring to and talking about. And not all Alabama fans, the true fans, you know I love you guys to death. The true fans out there that understand the game, not casuals, but people that understand the game, I love y'all. Unfortunately, it's these type of people that ruin it for everybody else and give Bama fans a bad look. As to how fans can be calling for an offensive coordinator's job after scoring 49 points on the road, I have no idea. That's only going to happen in Alabama. Let me ask you a question, not just Bama fans, but college football fans. Do you really think the offensive coordinator is the problem right now? We scored half a hundred. It's not the offensive coordinator's fault. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I know what a lot of Bama fans are about to do. You're going to bring up that last series against Tennessee where we decided to pass three straight times instead of running the ball and letting Tennessee waste their timeouts. Yes, at the time, I have to agree. I was sitting there watching the game with one of my buddies saying, run the ball, make Tennessee use their timeouts, kick the field goal, and we win the game. If we miss, we go to overtime. That's the worst case in scenario. Although I thought run the ball, you got to think about it. Hey, that's what Tennessee is thinking as well. And also, you got to think about this. Why would you run the ball to set up a field goal when Alabama's field goal kicker has sucked the past three weeks? We needed a touchdown. That's what we were really trying to do. Anyways, getting back on topic, during the last drive, it was second and 10, about 40 seconds left, and I was like, run the ball, run the ball, and what do you know? Bill O'Brien calls one of the best play calls I've ever seen. And here's what I'm talking about. Your casual fans aren't going to understand this, but it was pretty much a glorified run play. It was a pass play, and he had the perfect mismatch. He had Jameer Gibbs lined up with a linebacker, and it's called an HB option route. What's an HB option route? Because I know most of you aren't going to understand that. Well, normally, most times you're running back, and this is what happened. He's going to do an angle where he's going to run out and then cut back in, and he can run for days. And I think if Jameer Gibbs catches his ball, he's probably in the end zone. 
that's what normally is going to happen. And sometimes if the linebacker is taking the inside off, the running back, Jameer Gibbs in this situation, he can cut outside. That's why it's called an HB option. You have options. And well, 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 what do you know? This HB option route is wide open. It would have worked perfectly. Unfortunately for Bill O'Brien, Bryce Young didn't make a very accurate pass. It was catchable. It was low, down and away, and Jameer Gibbs dropped it. I wouldn't call that a drop. It was low and away, and I wasn't mad at him. It's not like it hit him in the face, and Jameer Gibbs is normally reliable in those situations. I say that to say this. If that play does work, and it's not Bill O'Brien's fault it didn't work. It's the player's fault because they didn't execute. Everyone would be praising Bill O'Brien at this current moment. Everyone would be saying, oh my goodness, what a genius. Tennessee thought they were going to run the ball, and he called a pass play. It worked out. Bill O'Brien, he should get a $10 million contract. I'm going to bring this up. These are my words. This is coming from Nick Saban's mouth. He said this about two weeks ago, and it resonated with me. Nick Saban, not Matt B. Great, but Nick Saban stated, at the end of the day, the very end of the day, the play calling, it doesn't matter so much. It's about can the players execute the play call. I've said that all year long. For all my Bama fans, why don't you quit blaming the defensive coordinator? Why don't you quit blaming the offensive coordinator and start looking at your players? Maybe, just maybe, your players aren't playing too great. But hey, I understand it. That's a wild guess. That's not going to happen, right? Alabama's the best in the world. They got the best five-star and four-star recruits. Their players are never going to mess up. It's always a defensive the coordinator's fault right i get it not everybody has the luxury and the time to watch film or even cares to watch the film but i do the reason i do it is because number one i want to know what i'm talking about i don't want to give y'all a lousy video i want to at least sound like i know something and number two most people don't look at that stuff. Well, actually, there's a number three to it, and really, I should have said this for number two. The second reason is, I want to know why Tennessee scored 52 points. I want to know why our defense looks like dog crap. I know I keep saying Nick Saban said this, but it's such a viable point. On a radio show last night, Nick Saban said that Tennessee went in the I formation, and the Alabama players didn't know what to do. I'm going to give you another great example. Remember Texas a and when they almost beat Alabama only two weeks ago, and everyone was joking on Jimbo Fisher? for that terrible play call at the end well when you look at it and go back and watch it it wasn't a terrible play call you got a one-on-one -on -one shot with your best wide receiver evan stored a five-star recruit i don't think that's bad odds the problem was haynes came the quarterback one made a terrible throw and two the timing was off if the texas a&m players executed the play everyone's talking about how jimbo fisher is a genius unfortunately when your players don't execute and they don't do a good job it falls on the head coach offensive coordinator whoever you want to blame Come on now, let's not act brand new here. This happens every single year, not every other year, every single year when Alabama loses a game. It's deja vu. Whenever Bama loses, these fans, they want somebody fired. Somebody's got to be fired, whether that's the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator. It's never going to be Saban, but somebody's got to be responsible for the loss. It's never the player's fault. And what shocks me the most is the guy they won't fire the most isn't the defensive coordinator it's the offensive coordinator and i think bama fans are so naive but if you're not a bama fan you understand how ridiculous that is if you do want to call for somebody's head yes pete golden he hasn't done the best job in the world i think he's doing an okay job but he hasn't done the best job and here's what i'm talking about with alabama fans being hypocrites they were praising pete golden two weeks ago when they held a m to 20 points and texas to 19 points but all of a sudden his players have a bad game and it's like okay Fire Pete Golden on to the next one. I don't know if some of y'all Bama fans think you can just pop out a offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator just like that, but it doesn't happen. You know what they say, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Think about it. My point is, you're pointing your fingers in the wrong direction. Just like that quote says, how's it go? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. It's the same thing with players. You can draw up the best play ever. You can have a good game plan, but that doesn't mean the players are going to follow the game plan. It doesn't mean they're going to make tackles and cover players in the secondary. Now, let me address this. If you're a Bama fan, you're also going to understand this. Every single year, what happens? When Alabama loses a game, all people on ESPN, whatever you watch, for the next two weeks are going to talk about the dynasty is falling off. Oh, Nick Saban has lost his edge. Give me a break. I've heard that conversation ever since 2015 in a game leading up to I'll never forget that week. It was when Alabama was coming off of that loss to Ole Miss at home and they was going into Georgia and they was like a... I think it was a six or seven point underdog. It was one of the few times Alabama was an underdog. Everybody was saying the dynasty's falling off. 
And yeah, Nick Saban and Alabama didn't just beat Georgia, they demolished them. It was bad. And ever since then, every single year, you'll hear the, oh, well, maybe Alabama's starting to lose their edge and Nick Saban, he's not as good as he once was. Blah, 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 Joe Schmo. I hear it every year. I'm sick and tired of it. That's not going to happen. At this point, I think us Bama fans are numb to ESPN trying to make a huge whopping deal out of Bama losing one regular season game. I get it, Bama lost. You can joke on us, laugh at us. Say this or say that, say we play bad in that game, but since when does one loss mean the dynasty is falling off? What do I say? What do I preach on this channel? Not just in college football, but in life. Never get too high when things are going really good and never get too low when things are going really bad. You got to be even kill in this life because you got to play the law of averages. It's going to even out. You're not always going to have bad days and you're not always going to have good days. Alabama, they had a bad day against Tennessee, but it's not always going to be bad. Here's a good quote for you I saw on Twitter. Paul Feinbaum said, The problem for Alabama is they are judged against perfection. Everyone else is judged against Alabama. Think about it. Bama's still the standard. But, and I have a big but. Here's where things get dicey. When I saw this, my eyes opened. I realize that sounded dumb. I mean, they were open when I saw it, but they open even more. You get what I'm trying to say. What you're looking at right here is the penalties per game since 2007, since Nick Saban has been in Alabama up to this point. You don't gotta be a rocket scientist to figure out every single year it gets worse. And most recently, 2022, we all know that Alabama ranks 131 out of 131 in penalties. Although I do think this little stat sheet is concerning, I don't think it's the end-all be-all because I honestly think more flags are being thrown more than ever. Back in 2007, 2008, 2009, these refs, they didn't call as much. Now, everything is called. If you want to try to say, oh, this is bad news for Bama, well, in 2020, they won the championship and they didn't even play a close game. Even in the years that are red on your screen, Alabama still won championships. And even dating back last year, Alabama, 7.1 penalties per game, they still made it to the championship and I still think they got a good shot this year. I'm not too sure if that's an indication of there's being more flags thrown than ever or Alabama's teams are undisciplined. I can tell you this much, this year's team is very undisciplined and they got a lot to work on and we'll leave it at that. Here's what I can't get over and it's the reason, the only reason I'm making this video. We've seen this story before. Do you remember what happened last time Alabama lost a regular season game to a game winning field goal? Oh, that's right, last year against AM. They made it to the championship. What was everybody saying back then? Oh man, Alabama, they're falling off. Texas A&M finally beat them, blah, 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 blah. To go on top of that years ago, was it 2011? I think it was, I could be wrong on that. Alabama lost to a game winning field goal in overtime to LSU nine to six. What happened that year? Alabama went on to win the championship. Let's be real here, Alabama's not falling off. They're not even close to falling off. And I can't believe people are even making that argument up because yeah, maybe if they got beat by 35 up in Neyland Stadium in Tennessee, we could have the conversation. But the only reason we're having this conversation and debate is because one field goal kicker made a kick and one other missed one. If Alabama's kicker makes that field goal and they go on to win the game, nobody's even talking about the dynasty is falling off. But since he missed, the dynasty's falling off. Fire Pete Golden, fire Bill O'Brien, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's just funny. Alabama, they're held to a different standard. I am very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But to run